Okay, the recording has started. Welcome, everyone. Prince, why don't you pray and start? Then we will we'll get started. Could you please pray with us? Yes, sir. Still. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this time, Lord. You've given us one more opportunity to learn your word in this morning, Lord. Just uh, we submit in your hand, Lord, and also help us to help us to uh, each of us that uh, learn your word, whatever we learn, uh, learning from Urban Church planting, Lord, and help us to use in this all things in our ministry, Lord. Thank you. I also pray for the, all the students, those who are not till joint, Lord. I pray for them. Their connection, uh, connectivity will be good and they will uh, quickly join. I uh, will begin the class, Lord. I submit all the things in your hand. Holy Spirit, guide us, lead us in this session. Just I pray. In Jesus' name, just pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. So, uh, we were talking about uh, the personal preparation that we have to go through um, in uh, or the personal life of a ch church planter. And, uh, and we covered certain areas. We talked about, you know, recognizing your call um, to pioneer. And we talked about the indicators of grace uh, that we could look at. Um, we said, you know, um, some, we should avoid these wrong reasons uh, in doing a church plant. Then we spent some time talking about um, should you pioneer on your own or should you work with an existing Christian uh, organization or ministry? And so we kind of went through the, um, the positives and what are some of the things we need to be careful about. Uh, if we are going to work with an existing Christian organization, those are useful things. And then we started talking about personal preparation. And how can you, uh, how can we personally prepare ourselves to go and, uh, you know, engage in church planting, or starting something in uh, an urban center, whether it's a local church or whether it's a Christian ministry. All right, so um, just to quickly review, we talked about being spiritually strong. We need to personally maintain a consistent personal spiritual life. Uh, we talked about getting equipped through the word uh, as we, and we continue to be equipped through the word. You know, that is something we need to be able to do and maintain. Uh, we talked about being clear about our vision and you know, being uh, single-minded, having a clear vision and staying focused. Uh, we talked about our willingness to uh, work hard. Um, that, um, you know, as leaders, you know, we definitely have to work twice as hard as others. And, you know, and, uh, somebody whom, whom God has called to pioneer, uh, we have to be willing to, you know, put in that uh, extra effort. Uh, we, we, uh, of course, we pray, we plan, but we shouldn't be hasty in what we do. Let God build the house. Let God, you know, give us increase uh, in the way, in the manner, in the time that, you know, he sees fit. Uh, we must be emotionally strong. There are going to be, you know, one of the biggest challenges would be emotional. We must be courageous. Uh, we must uh, uh, not get discouraged, not dismayed. And then uh, we also talked about uh, keeping things in order in our personal life. Um, we shouldn't let uh, personal weaknesses become an entry point for the enemy, right? Um, he, Satan would use areas of weakness in our lives uh, to come in and disrupt uh, what the good work that is taking place. And so we have to strengthen ourselves, to protect ourselves, protect our families, and so on. And uh, finally, you know, we, we stopped here in point number eight, where we said uh, we have to uh, develop the ability to, uh, to be strong, right? Uh, we need to be, uh, you know, we need to, to be able to maintain the fire within ourselves, uh, be motivated from within, uh, so to speak, and 
and to keep the fire burning. You know, we need to be able to do that. Um, we belong, of course. We do have. We will have. You know, other people around us uh, to encourage us and all of that. But at the same time, there is this certain degree of uh, independence that we must have. That is, that we need to be able to personally stir ourselves up, personally keep the fire burning. You know, and um, and and we need that grace and ability because uh, as you're especially in the early days when you are pioneering or you're starting a ministry, um, it may not always be easy and you have to keep your own fire burning strong as you are moving forward. So we're going to start from point number nine, and I think we may be able to finish this section today. Uh, let's see, but let's see how we go. Right? So what else can we do personally to prepare ourselves? Right. Another important uh, um, aspect of personal preparation is uh, uh, learning to relate well with people. Right. So that that means, uh, you know, I I really care. We must really care for the people that we have been sent to serve. Right. You know, in the, if you look at this passage in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, uh, you can see um, in, in that passage uh, Paul's compassion or his tender love uh, for the people, the, the Thessalonians. You know, he, he writes to them uh, about how much he cared for them while he was ministering to them. So you don't get the feeling that, you know, okay, he went there just to, you know, get a job done or uh, just do a project and then he can go back and, you know, tell people, hey, I finished the project or I, I uh, had a meeting or I had a conference and so many people came and, and that, you, you don't get that feeling. He talks about, and I'm just looking at that passage in my Bible uh, in uh, First Thessalonians 2. Uh, he, he says, you know, like verse 7, he says, like a nursing mother uh, cherishing her, her own children. That's how he cared for the people. Verse 8, he says, he was affectionately longing uh, for the people. He says, they became dear to us. Then he talks about how, you know, they, they, they labored and they worked while they were there to take care of their own needs. And they behaved themselves blamelessly. So, you know, so you can see from verse 7 and 8, First Thessalonians 2, uh, you know, how Paul cared for the people while he was ministering to them, right? So we need to have a genuine interest in people, uh, genuine interest in helping them, uh, not just, you know, uh, you know doing um, uh, ministry like a project work, you know, get it done, finished, over, let's go. No. Um, you care for them, you love them, you're working with them, you're building them up, you're strengthening them, you're giving into their lives, now you're being patient with them, you're encouraging them. So that's how uh, we must work with people. And um, connected to that is, uh, you know, number 10, which is while we learn to relate well with people, we must also learn how to manage relationships with people. So, you know, it's like there are, there are two sides to this. One is, I, I, you know, you love the people, you're pouring yourself out for the people. And at the same time, you need to manage relationships with people so that you don't, um, you know, you don't wear yourself out uh, in the process of serving people. Uh, you don't let people take advantage of you. You don't let people uh, misuse the relationships. So you need to manage relationships well. So that's also important. Uh, 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 the ability to say no uh, without feeling guilty. You know, As, for instance, if people, you know, if you need to go rest and then people are you know, demanding that, you know, you do this, you do that. Uh, it's, it's okay at times to say, look, you know, I, 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 I will come later. I will do, I will do that later, right? Right now, you know, maybe you need to go pray. Maybe you need to take time to study the word. And so you can say no to, you know, maybe doing house visits or doing things like that. 
<clears throat> and say, look, I will come later. You know, if it's not an emergency, you don't have to go right away. You can always do it later. So that that balance of, you know, you love people, you care for them, you're serving them. And at the same time, you know, you know, where to draw the line, uh, where to say, look, uh, I need to have this time to pray. I need to, you know, be doing certain other things. And therefore, I cannot come and be with the people. Um, that's that's very important. Uh, if we turn in our Bibles to uh, Mark chapter six, uh, we can see an example even in the uh, in the ministry of Jesus. You know, Mark chapter six. Uh, can somebody read verse thirty to thirty two? Mark six. Chap Mark chapter six, verses thirty to thirty two. Can somebody read it? Kiran, can you read it? Mark 6, 30 to 32. Yes, sir. Hmm. Lord, they departed to a desert, desert place in the boat by themselves. So uh, Mark 6, verse 30, 3, 0 to 32. So you read the verse before that, yeah. Then, then the apostle gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had thought. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves uh, to a desert, deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and, and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a desert, deserted place in the boat by themselves. Hmm. You see how uh, in this particular incident, um, the disciples were so busy uh, because the, you know there were so many people coming and going. Uh, Jesus told them, you know, uh, verse 31, come aside by yourselves and get some rest. You know, it's kind of interesting that um, Jesus told them to do that. You know, come, come and get some rest. And so they got into a boat, and you know, they did manage to get some rest. And then the people were there again, so they had to again step out and minister. Uh, but the point is, they needed to take some time out to rest. Um, and uh, people will always be there. Uh, needs will always be there. Uh, the challenges uh, that people are facing. And so therefore they need help. That's always going to be there. And so we need to know when we need to come apart and rest. And then we need to go back and serve. Come apart, rest, go back, serve. So we need to be able to manage that kind of um, relationship. And that ability to do that is an important thing. Uh, uh, the danger with, with many of us is that we get so drawn into serving people, uh, we just keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, and we don't take time to rest. We don't take time to uh, withdraw and, uh, you know, just spiritually renew ourselves, resting, praying, being in the Word, right? So to be able to manage relationships um, and, uh, you know, uh, to do that is an important skill and part of how we can prepare ourselves. Number 11, um, uh, as part of your preparation or our preparation for going out and starting a work, uh, some basic skills like, you know, managing time, money, uh, being good in our communication, some technical skills that you may need, like, you know, using your computer, internet, uh, email, uh, PowerPoint presentations, uh, those kind of things. Uh, uh, in our good skills to have because um, the, in most cases, you know, you will need to use it. Uh, it, it, it becomes part of the ministry work that, uh, you know, you need to be able to manage time, make appointments to go meet people or let, let people come and meet you, uh, to manage money, to communicate well with people in different ways, emails or phone or 
in person. Um, so all these, 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 you know, what we call as life skills, yeah, they are very important. And you know, if you, we can take time to develop ourselves in that area. Um, I guess a couple of other things that we can do to prepare is, um, you know, to develop the sensitivity to identify opportunities uh, for kingdom work. Uh, you respond quickly and, uh, and be proactive and responsive. So that is uh, when, when, when you see God opening a door, when you see some opportunity coming your way, uh, you should be able to quickly recognize so God is in it or God's not in it, right? Uh, if God's not in it, you just stay away. But if God is in it, then, you know, sometimes you just have to respond very quickly. Uh, you need to do something. Uh, uh, you may not always have the time, you know, to uh, to go and prepare and plan and organize. Sometimes you just have to respond quickly uh, and, and address the need and step into the opportunity. So the ability to do that is, is, is key, is important. And of course, you know, the more we practice, the more we learn to recognize small things and serve people, then God can, you know, lead us into bigger things. Now, again, another another aspect of where we can think about preparing ourselves is in a, by having good relation, mentoring relationships, um, people, uh, relationships with older people, older people who are more experienced in the ministry, who uh, are more mature, or who can uh, speak into our lives when we need them, uh, when we need some guidance, when we need some input. You know, so to have those kind of people around you, uh, to have those relationships uh, is good, it's important, uh, so that you can tap into that as and when you need. And also being aligned and accountable to the church that is sending you uh, is also an important thing to do. So what we did was, here's how we, you and I, you know, how we can prepare ourselves, personal preparation, as we get ready to go and start a ministry start a work right so some final thoughts here uh, on uh, okay while you are doing the ministry while you're starting the church uh, starting the ministry and you're making the journey you know, what are some things to keep in mind and i'll just go through this very quickly uh, just as some general guidance then next week we will talk about uh, preparing for the future and right? how do we prepare especially in the light of what that's happening how do we prepare ourselves for the future, right? So when we, when, you know, in making the journey, at some point we had to step out and get started, get on the ground, get started. That means it's okay, I'm going to start a church, or I'm going to start a ministry, and I'm going to do it. You know, we can do all the preparation, like we said, you know, we can do the survey, we can do the praying, the planning, the preparation, and but then finally, you just have to get out and start. So take action, step out, get started. Uh, establish commitment to your call. That means, you know, the, um, like we said, when you start ministry, everything is very exciting. You know, the first few weeks, the first few months are very exciting. Uh, and then after that, uh, you know, maybe things may not necessarily grow as fast as you think it is, you kind of hit that place where it's the routine, like you have to do this. It's, it gets a little mundane in the sense that, you know, maybe it's the same people coming back to church week after week and uh, you're not seeing any increase or any sudden growth. But that's when you have to be committed to what God has called you to do, right? You need to establish commitment to the call. That God, you have given me this vision You've sent me to this place. Uh, you want me to start this ministry. You want me to plant this church. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to stick to this vision. I'm going to establish commitment. Right. So when you and I establish commitment to the people, to the place, now that is very powerful because then, from then on, you will see the blessing begin to accelerate or the things begin to increase. Um, so uh, I, I'm not making this a rule, but usually, you know, at least the first two years, 
is 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 you know a, a time period that you'd say you know that's when you really need to establish commitment to your call and that you're there to get the work done get the work started now sometimes it may be that god may just want you to you know to do that work for two years and then hand it off to somebody else and move on uh, that's fine but the point is uh, if you are there to you know to really see a work take place and if if you're called there as as a life assignment then definitely you need to establish that commitment and then you'll begin to see the fruit of that uh stay focused avoid distractions you know people will call you to do this to do that uh, but it's so important for you to stay focused on what you went to do in that city uh, you know you, you if you're going to plant a church, don't get distracted and, you know, get into traveling ministry. You no, know, stay focused. You can always travel later. Uh, if you're being called to, you know, be a minister of the word, uh, don't get distracted into something different, like starting a sports ministry or something else. You know, stay focused on what God has called you to do, uh, aligned to the gifts that he has given you. Okay. Uh, be tenacious you within yourself. You say, I'm going to stay at this until God tells me my job is over here. Right? So you don't quit until God tells you to say, God tells you, okay, you've done your job. So you stay at your post. Be tenacious, be persistent, don't quit. Right? Um, sometimes you may be in a season where uh, you're working a job as well as planting a church. Um, uh, then that's when you need to be, you know, you need to be even more careful in managing your time uh, because, you know, you're dividing your time between your job, your family, your personal spiritual growth and the ministry. So there's a lot of work uh, and you need to be very careful. Right. So when we started all people's church, the first um, 13, 14 years from 2001 to 2014. Um, so I guess that's a little over 13 years. Uh, I was, I was, you know, bivocational. That means I, uh, I was uh, running a business and I was pastoring the church. And then after that, I transitioned uh, fully to do the minister, the work, the church work. But that that was real challenging time because you had to, you know, divide your time, your efforts, your energies between both your work and ministry. It's doable, and if that's what God wants you to do, you do it for a season, then you could transition out. Um, and while you're doing your work, keep asking questions, keep learning, and uh, keep you know improving. So um, you know, stay alert and see how things are going, and always keep improving, keep getting better in in the things you do, right? Uh, and and the best way is to keep but it's by asking questions, you know, are we doing the best thing? Are we doing the right thing? Uh, could we be doing this differently? Could we be, you know, reaching people in a different way? Uh, is there something else we should be doing? So as you keep asking those kinds of questions, uh, you will get new ideas and new direction uh, and you can adapt, you can adjust, uh, you can improve what you are doing. Uh, another thought that I would share uh, when you are making the journey is to nurture and protect what God has birthed and uh, avoid um, avoid wrong alliances. That means, you know, if you uh, get involved in uh, with uh, alliances or it could be individuals or organizations that they distract you, take you off your course, it can literally destroy uh, what God wants to do. So be watchful, careful, protect what God has birthed and uh, don't get you know, caught up in even this ideas or practices or theology that can be destructive. You know? So just be careful. This is what God has called me to do. This is what uh, I must stay true to as you're making the journey to plant a church or start a ministry. Another important part is uh, you need to let others come and be a part of what God is doing, right? So although you may be the pioneer, you may be the person with a vision and you started, remember, you're not the owner. God is the owner. You're a steward. And God will send other people to be part of 
the ministry. So make space, make room for others to be a part of uh, what is happening. Uh, take care of yourself. Uh, um, uh, so by giving yourself time to rest, giving yourself time to, uh, you know, stay strong, stay fresh, you're just going to be a blessing to other people. So don't be afraid to take invest time in taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, so on, right? If you need to take a break, take a break. If you need to take a short vacation, take a short vacation. Uh, if you, you know, need time to rest, take time to rest. Whatever you need to do to take care for yourself, do it. Because when you take care of yourself, you're actually being a blessing to others because you're going to then be around to bless them, right? Um, plan for future generations. Uh, we've talked about this before that, you know, the, the work is going to go through stages and it'll come to a time when, you know, the next generation uh, will have to step up, will need, need to take leadership and uh, they need to take the work forward. So plan that way, uh, think that way, prepare that way, raise up people who can uh, take the work over from you and uh, you know who will be able to stay aligned, stay true to the vision and take things forward. And then at the right time, you can hand the work to them and uh, you know do what God's called you to do, either just be there and be an encouragement, or if God calls you to move on to start something else, you can do it. But your goal is to make sure that in the church planting work or in the ministry you're doing, uh, you do it in such a way that the work can continue uh, as long as possible, continue to bless people. You don't want it to die out just because you had to move out or move on, right? So you plan in such a way that the work can continue for coming generations, All right? So uh, these are some thoughts from a personal perspective uh, as far as church planting and uh, or starting a ministry in an urban context. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, God may send you to do something as a life assignment. That means this is what you're going to be doing the rest of your life. Sometimes God may send you to do this as uh, a work for a certain season. And you may move from place to place, planting churches or starting ministries. So, so different people are called uh, differently. But uh, what I would say is, you know, for all of these things, we can you know, we can really prepare ourselves. Uh, and uh, if we prepare ourselves well, we can do a good work and uh, we can do it in such a way that whatever we start will continue uh, for the future to bless generations to come. Okay, so with that, we complete this section. And we have one last section left, which we will pick up next week which has to do with preparing for the future, right? So uh, what I wanted to do was just um, share some thoughts on, look, uh, you know, what, what can we expect as we look up ahead, um, especially uh, given where we are, uh, we are transitioning out of... Uh, mm -hmm. Pandemic. I'm not saying you know everything is over yet, but uh, slowly churches are opening up. People are beginning to come and attend in person, and so on. So we are in that process of uh, transitioning out of a pandemic and getting ready for the future. So what will the future look like? What would be some things uh, we should be prepared for, and how can we? I think the big question is how can we. Uh, get back to, you know, how can we go back to pursuing the great commission of um, making disciples and evangelizing and winning souls and discipling people? Uh, a lot of that work was disrupted uh, in the last um, uh, year and a half, almost two years. Uh, so now how do we just, you know, get all that back and you know, what would it look like in the future? So that's kind of what we want to do uh, for the next uh, lectures next week and uh, with that we will be done with this course I'll just do a full review um, take you just go through everything once again make sure you're 
our, our, our understanding is clear and then we are more, more or less done. And I will also make sure I get out, get the assignments out so that you'll have time to finish them by the end of the semester, which will be the 26th of November. So you'll have enough time to work on those assignments and uh, submit them in, okay? Any questions before we wrap up today's lecture? Okay, um, no questions. All right, let's pray and then we will uh, dismiss. Um, can I ask um, Siddharth if you would like to pray with us and dismiss us, please? Yeah, sure, Pastor. God, we just want to thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. God, we just want to pray as we start this day and as we continue our day, God, we just want to pray that will be with us and guide us and lead us, Lord. God, I pray that um, as we study in our Bible college, it's a final year, Lord. God, I pray that you will be with us, Lord. Give us the vision and the plan and the purpose that you have for us, Lord. And help us to grow more in you, God, and in your word. I pray that you will be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Um, God bless. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you, everybody.